two weeks like that. But there's always a mother or a father. <coughs> but in the case of Brahma, you don't see that. He actually takes birth from the lotus flower of the Supreme Personality. Vishnu. So here they will be saying, <coughs> even Brahma didn't have a mother and he was born like that. But then she said, I'm so surprised you took birth in my womb. <laughs> you know, that's like, she is like so amazed. Do you remember who else was amazed like that? No. Kunti. Huh? Prayers. Yeah, in her prayers, she was saying how he's doing. She was astonished that he's the Supreme Lord and he's like passing through like an ordinary person. <coughs> okay. So, so, in this purport, Srila Prabhupada talks about how. Krishna, I mean, uh, how uh, Devahuti is astonished <coughs> and, uh, and he had to even worship for thousands of years, remember? Brahma? So she says, but even Brahma simply meditated upon you whose body is a source of unlimited devotion. So he had to meditate and then finally he got his darshan. Whereas here she got him as a baby and then he's sitting in front of him. So that was her uh, amazement. She said, how is this, you know, you can do this like that. And he is the source of their all the material universes and yet he is, he is her child <laughs> so it's like very hard for her to conceive <laughs> this is my child that means this personality you're so wonderful yeah? you're the source of the entire universe and yet you you're taking birth in my womb and then remember uh, at the time of devastation uh, when Markinda Rishi was wanting to see the material nature, how it was, the Lord takes the form of a baby also. So, and then he sucks his uh, toes. So, that form is the same baby that is in the womb of uh, Devahuti now. <laughs> it's just simply astonishing. How can he be there and here there at the same time? Text three. Sa eva visvasya bhavangi datte. Sa eva visvasya bhavangi datte. Guna bhavahe na vibhakta vidya. Guna bhavahe na vibhakta vidya. Sargadi ani ho vitata visandhi. Sargadi ani ho vitata visandhi. Atmishvaro tak. My dear Lord, although personally you have nothing to do, you have distributed your energies in the interactions of the material modes of nature. <clears throat> and for that reason, the creation, maintenance and dissolution of the cosmic manifestation take place. My dear Lord, you are self-determined and are the Supreme Personality of Godhead for all living entities. For them you created this material manifestation and although you are one, your diverse energies can act multifariously. This is inconceivable to us. So again here, more confirmation about the Lord. We don't know how he acts but she is giving an idea that he has multifarious energies and these are the energies that interact in the spiritual world as well as in the material world and they make things happen and so here she says uh, modes material modes of nature and for that reason the creation maintenance and dissolution of the cosmic manifestation take place 
So, so many places the energy of the Lord is functioning in one form or another. <coughs> so, what can we understand? We can understand that He is actually inconceivable. <laughs> it's not possible to understand Him. Y'all are like uh, different nakshatras. <laughs> Only you see them at some times of the year. <laughs> I thought you said, you say they appear once, like one by one. <laughs> For no, five no, days. they always say the clouds. Yeah, all oh, the clouds are coming. <laughs> it's my failing eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so here, inconceivable. And uh, the way he does his inconceivable... Uh, uh, past times and everything is through his different mm-hmm. energies. Yeah. So how is the material world functioning? He is overseeing it. Maya Dekshena Prakriti Suyati Sacharachara. So he is also overseeing it, but he is not active in it. He is already <coughs> created or and he has empowered it. So it goes under his direction. His direction, not anyone's direction. His direction, ultimate direction is Krishna. So here also we see creation, maintenance and dissolution. Or creation, sustenance and destruction. Remember? Where? <laughs> the first verse, first canto. Jammarias, yeah. So they also, same thing. He does all these things and therefore he is the absolute truth. There is no... Other cause beyond him. Yeah. So she is again saying, "This is amazing." Yeah. Um, but we read many times we don't get understood. <laughs> which means we are we are we are thinking we are better still. That is better, better than Krishna. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we have that uh, ego thing, so we cannot see the amazing potency of the Lord. <coughs> That's why we are not amazed by all these things. Or we are too familiar. Just sometimes they say that don't get too familiar with the spiritual mass. <laughs> the spiritual mass is great. But we after a while at first we are oh guru day, guru day. <laughs> like, later on we are guru day. <laughs> So the mood changes. Yeah. So same way. Krishna is amazing, inconceivable. Yet uh, because we become so familiar in our dealings and in our studies, uh, we are thinking Oh, I know Krishna. Actually, you don't mm-hmm. not <laughs> nothing, you know. <laughs> you know that's about it. <laughs> and and the fascinating thing is, we can say we know Krishna, but how is his energies working? Right? How is the material nature working? That's amazing. How the clouds suddenly forming and rains are coming. We can say somewhat, you know, that this is how it works. The physical laws or natural laws. You know? But we cannot fully explain. Even the scientists still, they are not sure how the lightning strikes. Is it from the bottom up or up down? <laughs> and they're sort of saying it is now, that's what they think. Maybe in five years' time, they'll change that. Again. Yeah. And she also explains in, in, in this discussion, she says, the, the entire material creation is created for the living entities. She says that for all living entities, for them you created this material manifestation and although you are one and then the energies act. So she's saying that very clearly for us to understand that this material energy was made for us. And what is it made for? It is made for for our enjoyment and at the same time rectification or purification. So Prabhupada also mentions within the purport that the the lots uh, also manifest differently like Brahma is one of them, uh, Vishnu is another person and then Shiva is also another person. And they are all invested with a certain uh, type of energy or empowered by a certain power. You know? And after doing that he is not uh, messing around with the material nature actually. So if you st- if you look carefully, the Lord is involved, but He is not directly involved. He is either involved through His uh, expansions, like Paramatma, or through His energies, or through His 
empower personalities. Okay. <clears throat> So he he has a will and his will is what? What is the Lord's will? To reclaim the Yeah, to reclaim. So his will is manifested through the <coughs> different energies. energies. Yeah. So that is his determination. He is determined to get us out of this <laughs> material nature. We don't want to go. We are also determined. We are determined. <laughs> 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 yeah. So. So therefore, it may, yeah, we are determined to say, but he is the Supreme Lord. So his will will always prevail. prevail. Yes, ultimately, he'll, he'll get what he wants. <laughs> because he is he's inconceivably merciful, right? So he will do anything to make us get attracted to him again. All right? So the second paragraph, Srila Prabhupada said, why is the creation made? It is important for us to do. Many times proper explains it. So that we know fully and understand and then we change our uh, consciousness. Why is the creation made? To dominate the material nature. Uh? To dominate the material nature. No, for us to enjoy. 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 Yeah. yeah, you can say dominate. Yeah. Enjoy or dominate or lord it over the material nature. Yeah. But at the same time, he set it up so that we can purify it. Realize, come to senses. purify, come to senses that we are actually dependent on the Lord. We can never be happy otherwise. Eko baunam yo vida dati kaman. Right? Nitya nitya nanam chetana chetana. So, this is important principle from the Vedic uh, statements. He is the one who is giving us everything. No one else can supply anything. Right? In fact, every Ishwara who is so powerful in this universe is maintained by the Supreme. Their source of power is from Krishna. Okay. Text 4. Satyam jatari nanata Satyam bhutto me 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 jatari nanata as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, you have taken birth from my abdomen. Oh my Lord, how is that possible for the Supreme One who has in his belly all the cosmic manifestation? The answer is that it is possible. For at the end of the millennium, you lie down on a leaf of a banyan tree and just like a small baby, you lick the toe of your lotus foot. <laughs> so, as I was saying earlier, so whenever there's a dissolution, when it's all the waters of dissolution, the Lord is in a banyan leaf sucking, is thinking, what is this they are trying to meditate on my lotus? <laughs> so, so even at that time, this is the beginning of creation, they know this is how the Lord does his pastime. So this knowledge is already there, it's not something made up, okay? And he does that. Madhavatra <laughs> Sai. So it's amazing. So Markandeya Rishi also saw that, and this is confirmed by Devahuti that this is what the Lord does. It's part of his pastime. When the whole creation is in a mess, he is not disturbed. He's just tasting it, so thinking, what else? <laughs> How much transcendental pleasure is there within himself? Uh, because. When we worship, we worship the lotus feet, right? So we always look at the feet. The feet is because the feet walks everywhere and therefore it is considered to be the lowest yes. portion. But then the, for the Lord, everything is the same. Right? His feet gives people liberation, trans transcendental pleasure. So therefore, uh, great sages and devotees, they always meditate on the lotus feet, trying to take darshan. When you go to the temple, we look at the lotus feet and trying to get some mercy like that. So, <coughs> so the Lord is thinking, what is this? They are all trying to look at my lotus feet. 
to see. Why are they trying to meditate on my words? <laughs> so, so you can see, this is just uh, amusing. Hmm? He wants to taste himself. And similarly, he wanted to taste the mood of Radharani and he came as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is uh, an amazing personality. He's a very funny as well as interesting person. So why not learn to get to know this person <laughs> in an intimate way? Vande Atantra Prasumaya Pabmanam Let me try the other one. Vande Tantra Prasamaya Pabmanam Nidesha Bajam Chavibu Vibu Taye Nidesha Bajam Chavibu Vibu Taye Tavataras Atma Pato Palabdai Tataya My dear Lord, you have assumed this body in order to diminish the sinful activities of the fallen and to enrich their knowledge in devotion and liberation. Since these sinful people are dependent on your direction, by your own will you assume incarnations as a boar and as other forms. Similarly, you have appeared in order to distribute transcendental knowledge to your dependents. <coughs> hmm. So again, she is confirming many things that we have read in the Bhagavad Gita. So the Lord comes. Uh, so he comes in order to re-establish religious principles because it is diminished due to the Increase in sinful activities. So the Lord comes. Uh, here Prabhupada used the word assume this body. Right? So avatar means they, they come in their own spiritual body. But it may appear different to our mundane vision like that. So what does he also do? Not only to to help this the reduce the sinful propensities of the living entities, he also comes to give them Transcendental knowledge. Yeah. Why? So that they can Only come that they can come back. back. Go back, come back. <coughs> go back to him. To, to, to come back to him. Go back to him. <laughs> huh? to, to remove the avidya. To, to remove the avidya, yes. To remove the ignorance. Yeah. Uh, without knowledge of uh, Krishna or from the scriptures, we are always in. Ignorance. And ignorance is the source or cause of sinful. our sinful, sinful life. Yeah. Okay. So once you, you understand through proper transcendental knowledge that these activities are sinful and these are uh, transcendental, then we know how to behave or act in such a way to please the Lord, to go back to God. Liberation, so to speak. Yeah. Because... Continuing, she says, the sinful people are dependent on your direction. <laughs> Otherwise, they, they are always going to be sinful. So they are dependent. Uh, so the Lord comes to uh, show the people, this is the right way to behave. This is the right way to do. Otherwise, innocent people will become sinful and be led in the wrong direction. If the Lord doesn't appear, what happens to us? Continue. Yeah, but what 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 will we do be doing here? <laughs> Suffering. We tend to want to enjoy more. Our without the Lord, the 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 default would be just to enjoy anything. And you can see in a baby, right? They will just take anything and put it in the mouth. <laughs> just enjoy. Or that's the propensity. It's very. Obvious when you look at a baby, that's the nature without any knowledge. Uh, the senses is the first thing that activates, and then what the sense wants is to just see what is good, what is.
tasty, what is enjoyable, that's all. <laughs> that's why we'll all become like that, like animals, right? This guide towards those things that gives us pleasure. So therefore the Lord comes out of His uh, mercy to teach us not to do all these things because it, it then makes us in cycle, cycle, cycle of birth, death and old age. Yeah. And in this particular incarnation, he came to give them transcendental knowledge through the Sankhya. Okay. So that they can distinguish and understand based on that knowledge and then take up devotion to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Okay, so there are many, many incarnations. Rama, the Murti, So, one of, uh, and here also, Prabhupada writes, you can come as fish, tortoise, half man, half lion. So, in any species, you can take form. Okay. Text 6. Yannamadeya Shravananu Kirtana Yannamadeya Shravananu Kirtana Yatpravanadya Smaranada Pikvati Yatpravanadya Smaranada Pikvati Swadopi Sadhya Savanaya Kalpati Swadopi Sadhya Savanaya Kalpati Kuthapunaste Bhagavanu Darshana Say, say nothing of the spiritual advancement of persons who see the Supreme Person face to face. Even a person born in a family of dog eaters immediately <coughs> becomes eligible to perform Vedic sacrifices if he once utters the holy name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead or chants about him, cares about his pastimes, offers him obeisances or even remembers him. So here, Devahuti is also uh, uh, glorifying the, the Lord's Potence. holy name. And, and she doesn't just say holy name, she says holy name, just once. <laughs> if he once utters the holy name, uh, just see. <coughs> amazing. It's not like uh, you don't have to actually chant so many different holy names. You can, but here she's she's making it very clear that just once if you chant purely, that's enough. Because of the... Everything, yeah? you get purified. You become a pure devotee of the Lord, just once. <clears throat> and, and this also applies to even dog eaters. Dog eaters are considered to be very low. Swaada, Swaada. So dog eaters, or the or one who who takes delight in eating dog meat. So even they, if they even say one time, what does it mean? It means they are. Uh, I mean, this continues with the next verse actually. So, but before that, we can look at what Sridhar Swami says. Okay. Swa Sadhya immediately is used, and Sridhar Swami also remarks that one can immediately become eligible to perform Vedic sacrifices. A person born in a family of the low caste, which is accustomed to eat dogs, is so positioned due to his past sinful activities. But by chanting or hearing once in pureness or in an offenseless manner, he is immediately relieved of the sinful reaction. <clears throat> Not only is he relieved of the sinful reaction, but he immediately achieves the result of all purificatory processes. Taking birth in the family of a Brahmana is certainly due to pious activities in one's past life. But still, a child who is born in a family of a Brahmana depends for his further reformation upon initiation into acceptance of a sacred thread 
and many other reformatory processes. But a person who chants the holy name of the Lord, even if born in a family of chandalas, dog eaters, does not need reformation. Simply by chanting Hare Krishna, he merely becomes purified and becomes as good as the most learned brahmanas. That is the power of the holy name. Such potency it has. Either you are born as a brahmana, then you have to do so much, uh, what is that, rituals and so on to come to the status. But if a dog eater chants just Hare Krishna, he also becomes a brahmana. So it, it, you can see from me, it is not due to janma, karma. It is due to guna and karma. So if he has a taste for chanting and doing the services like a brahmana, he is a brahmana. Particularly in this Kali Yuga, huh? uh, you can't have, everyone claims to be, oh, I'm from this ashram or that Varna or whatever. Uh, it's all nonsense. Because you see the mixing and due to the culture, very promiscuous culture, uh, the Varnas and I, they all mixing like anything. You know? But therefore, uh, for such population, the best way to reform is through the process of chanting the holy names. Okay. And Prabhupada makes it very clear, or rather Sri the Swami says, if one chants in an offenseless manner, immediately the sinful reaction is burnt away. So that means even if we have, have prarabdha karma, <coughs> that is also clear. Okay. That means, what is a prarabdha karma in this case? Is the person He's a born as a dog eater, but simply by chanting they are becoming brahmanas. <laughs> not not like if he, the face change and the body, not that kind. Of <laughs> Understand? So then Sri Srila Swami continues, Anena Pujyatvam Lakshate. Some caste brahmanas remark that by chanting Hare Krishna purification begins. Of course, that depends on the individual process of chanting. But this remark of Sridhar Swami's is completely applicable if one chants the holy name of the Lord without offense. For he immediately becomes more than a Brahman. Okay? So it's not a question of purification beginning. They are immediately, if it's offenseless. Pujyatvam, he immediately becomes as respected as a most learned brahmana and can be allowed to perform Vedic sacrifices. So remember, if you are born in a brahmin family, you still have to go through some training. Okay. So similarly, if someone from uh, out the streets come to Hare Krishna, we tell them chant and after a few months take initiation. After a few months, teach you how to do yagna, <laughs> deity worship. You can understand how fast this process is and how potent it is. Yeah. <laughs> so therefore, uh, such personalities are pujyatvam, respectable, very powerful. Okay. <coughs> so devotee is understanding all these things very nicely. <coughs> so and then Prabhupada continues, usually initiation depends on the bona fide spiritual master who directs the disciple. If he sees that a disciple has become competent and purified by the process of chanting, he offers the sacred threat to the disciple just so that he will be recognized as 100% equal with the Brahmana. Okay. This is also confirmed in the Hari Bhakti Vilas by Sri Sanatan Goswami as a base metal like bell metal can be changed into gold by a chemical process any person can similarly be changed into a brahmana by diksha vidana, the initiation process. Therefore, uh, it's, it's important to take initiation. <coughs> so then, Baba uh, talks about what people talk about chanting. Right? It's, it is sometimes remarked that by the chanting process, one begins to purify himself and can take birth in his next life in a Brahmana family and then be reformed. <laughs> but that is not the case, right? Uh, 
So Prabhupada says, but at this moment, even those who are born in the best Brahma families are not reformed. <laughs> now is there any certainty that they are actually born of Brahmana fathers? <laughs> no, it's a fact. That's why he's saying that. Otherwise Prabhupada don't write such things. Formerly, Garbhadana reformatory system was prevalent, but at the present moment, there's no such Garbhadana or seed giving ceremony. So, under these circumstances, no one knows if a man is factually born of a Brahmana father. That's why. Whether one has acquired the qualification of a Brahmana depends on the judgment of the bona fide spiritual master. So therefore, you need a guru who can tell you, okay, you are qualified to be Brahmana or not qualified to be a Brahmana. So, therefore, uh, Sanatan Goswami says, Dvi Jatvam Jayate. Okay, by the process of initiation by a spiritual master, a person is accepted as a Brahmana in his purified state of chanting the holy name of the Lord. So therefore, even if you have second initiation, you have to chant your rounds properly. Otherwise, you are not Brahman. You are trying to be a Brahmana. <laughs> You're trying to come to that stage. So if you have second initiation, means you can become qualified as better than Brahmana if you chant nicely. Okay, then you become a Vaishnava. <laughs> Tall order. So when you automatically you get Brahminical qualification if you follow Sadhana Bhakti and get initiated. And when you get the second initiation, you must be as good as qualified Vaishnava. That means you must follow things very, very strictly. Text 7. This uh, verse you all should memorize, right? I think so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Brahma no to Nama Grenanti. Oh, how glorious are they whose tongues are chanting your holy name. So very nice. She's telling her own son. Eh? Just imagine. <laughs> She's glorifying. How glorious are they whose tongues are chanting your holy name. No, wait. Okay. Even if born in the families of dog eaters, such persons are worshipable. Persons who chant the holy name of your Lordship must have executed all kinds of austerities and fire sacrifices and achieved all the good manners of the Aryans. To be chanting the holy name of your Lordship, they must have bathed at holy places of pilgrimage, studied the Vedas and fulfilled everything required. <laughs> So you can't chant unless you've gone through this. Which means, if you are chanting, you are actually fulfilling all these things. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, this is a little off topic, so I'll do it later. Okay, off topic. Alright, so that means when we are chanting nicely and sincerely, then we automatically have done all kinds of austerities, fire sacrifices, like and that applies to even one who's born in a dog eater's family. Right? Makes sense? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good manners of the Aryans. Juhuhu Sasnur Arya. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, memorize this verse. It's a very nice verse. Anyone who says, oh, I'm not, I'm not qualified, oh, I can't do this. I am not going. Are you here? It says very clear. Just take up and chant. You become qualified. So then the Guru can initiate you. <laughs> the first one asana is created by Krishna. Now in all these verses he is saying devotion is beyond one ashram. Yes. Actually that is a fact. One ashram raises you to the consciousness of goodness where you can perform devotion to Krishna. That's what one ashram is. It's set up to meet the criteria or the nature of individuals so that they feel comfortable 
and yet at the same time perform to please the Supreme Lord. And beyond all that is devotional service, direct devotional service. Okay? Parnasham is like a step below where they indirectly do devotional service, but at the same time satisfying their needs. Okay? <coughs> so Prabhupada very nicely in the purport, he talks about this offenseless chanting. Uh, one should not be astonished by this statement of Srimad Bhagavatam. One should not disbelieve or think how by chanting the holy name of the Lord can one become a holy man to be compared to the most elevated Brahmana. So this is what the common people think like. So Prabhupada said we shouldn't think that. We should have faith. strong faith. Right? Nayam lokasti na paro Na sukam samsayatmanaha. Right? What? But the doubting soul, there is no happiness in this world after the next. Yes. So that is the point. You one should not, Krishna tells Arjuna, you do not doubt the scriptures. Don't doubt the scriptures. For a doubting soul, there is no happiness in this life or in the next life. <clears throat> how can you be happy otherwise? If you are not connected to Krishna, how can you be happy? Not possible. So Prabhupada continues to eradicate such doubts in the minds of unbelievers. This verse affirms that the stage of chanting of the holy name of the Lord is not sudden, but that the chanters have already performed all kinds of Vedic rituals and sacrifices. So some of you may have done all the sacrifices in your past life also. <laughs> or it could be just a mercy of Oh, mercy or whatever, but it is. If you can chant, as Prabhupada is saying, of course, chanting uh, purely, offenselessly. <clears throat> it is not very astounding. For no one in this life can chant the holy name of the Lord unless he has passed all lower stages such as performing Vedic ritualistic sacrifices, studying the Vedas and practicing good behavior like that of the Aryans. All this must first have been done. Just as a student in law class is to be understood to have already graduated from general education, anyone who is engaged in the chanting of the holy name of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, must have already passed all lower stages. Of course, we are always the mercy of our spiritual master. Always, irregardless of whether we have done a million sacrifices in past. Even then, we are at the mercy of the spiritual. Always. Okay? <clears throat> it is said that those who simply chant the holy name with the tip of the tongue are glorious. That means they always chant it. One does not even have to chant the holy name and understand the whole procedure. Namely, the offensive stage, offenseless stage, and pure stage. If the holy name is sounded on the tip of the tongue, that is also sufficient. It is said here in the Nama, a singular number, one name, Krishna or Rama, is sufficient. It is not that one has to chant all the holy names of the Lord. The holy names of the Lord are innumerable, and one does not have to chant all the names to prove that he has already undergone all the process of Vedic ritualistic ceremonies. So you can chant one time and see what happens. <laughs> if nothing happens, then continue chanting. <laughs> <laughs> if one chants once only, it is to be understood that he has already passed all the examinations. Not to speak of those who are chanting always 24 hours a day. All right, this examination is not your school examination. Sometimes people may confuse. <laughs> it's about your spiritual things. It's about uh, all the yagnas, you know, uh, the artas. <coughs> One must, uh, uh, okay, here it says tubyam, that means unto you only. One must chant God's name, not as the Mayavadi philosophers say, any name such as a demigod's name or the names of God's energies. Only the holy name of the Supreme Lord will be effective. 
Anyone who compares the holy name of the Supreme Lord to the name of the demigods is called Pashandi or an offender. So, but you don't call people Pashandi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Because they will take offense. No? So they are very offended, so don't make them become more offensive. So the other thing is when you chant, which Prabhupada also emphasizes, the idea behind chanting is to please Krishna. Not that you are counting a number. Okay? Maybe initially you may think I have to chant a certain number. But after you are used to chanting, you have to chant, Lord, I am going to do this nicely for you. And then you find that if you are always disturbed, you have to pray to the Lord, pray to your spiritual master and say, please help me to focus my chanting. Then you will create and develop a pure mentality. It doesn't matter which uh, uh, lifestyles you had previously. Like in this case, Swapacho means dog eat a family like that. So it's not like that. You will be purified. If your mood is sincere and you are truthful, okay, Yeah. And then if you are, if you can chant like that, you become, Prabhupada says, competent, quite competent to deliver others. That means you can guide others back to Godhead also. That means if you are sincere and if you are still a Kanista Adhikari, you can still help someone go back to Godhead. That is the potency of the Holy Name. Just like Haridas Thakur, of course Haridas Thakur is an exalted person, but it means we can do it if we are sincere. Prabhupada says he was apparently born in a family of Mohammedans, but because he was chanting the holy name of the Supreme Lord offenselessly, Lord Chaitanya empowered him to become the authority or Acharya of spreading the name. Therefore he is known as Namacharya. <clears throat> so it didn't matter which family he was born. Uh, it doesn't matter. According to this statement, it's, it has nothing, no bearing. Which family or which uh, country you were born, there's no such thing. Chaitanya right? Mahaprabhu and Advaita Prabhu accepted him as an authority because he was offenselessly chanting the name of the Lord. So they also accepted that he had already performed all kinds of austerities, studied the Vedas and performed all sacrifices. In his case, it is true because he is Lord Brahma. <laughs> but it's the same for anyone who is offensively chanting. So then Prabhupada compares with Smarta Brahmanas. Uh, they are of the opinion that even if such persons who are chanting the holy names of the Lord are accepted as purified, they still have to perform the Vedic rites or await their next birth in a family of Brahmanas so that they can become they can perform the Vedic rituals. Let's see. So somehow or other the culture of Brahmanical culture got watered down and spoiled. And so the caste Brahmanas or Smarta Brahmanas uh, took over this. <clears throat> Actually, it is not the case. Huh? It is not the case because Krishna says it is guna karma, 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 not janma karma. So we have to know these things. So that if people talk to us, then we can say, you are so smart, my dear friend. But Krishna is saying this. So we have to follow Krishna, my dear friend. <laughs> Even though you are learned. <laughs> Actually, you are calling him a rascal. <laughs> right? Avijananti ma mudda. So Krishna says all these people are muddhas, rascals. <coughs> so we are not calling them rascals. Krishna is. So if they say, why you say like that? You say, I'm not saying. Krishna is calling. <laughs> yeah, that is. You, you show the verse. See, Krishna is called rascal. 
Okay, not rascal. Yeah, mudda like a donkey. <laughs> so then they understand they are fools. <clears throat> so when we chant offenselessly for the pleasure of Krishna, then we are said to be having performed all the rituals and sacrifices like that. <clears throat> so similarly, uh, Prabhupada talks about Juhu, Shashnu, Arya, all this. <clears throat> Going to pilgrimage, sacrifices, uh, <clears throat> the standards of an Aryan, that means the culture behind that. Aryan means very civilized and they know about the Lord. But then this thing has been corrupted by His grace, Hitler does. <laughs> right? He used the Aryan and then said the Germans are Aryan. And then now people, when you say any, they say, there's a, in America there's an Aryan uh, group, no? The white guys, they have a, or the KKK, all this uh, white supremacy and all this. Yeah, unless one has touched the scriptures like the Vedas, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam, you cannot claim to be an Aryan. Right? There's even an Indian group, right? Arya Samaj. Yeah. But then they don't understand the meaning of the words. They are impersonalists. <coughs> so finally, Prabhupada says. <coughs> If one is seated on the bench of a high court and is giving judgment on cases, it means that he has already passed all legal exams and is better than those who are engaged in the study of law or those expecting to study law in the future. So in a similar way, persons who are chanting the holy name are transcendental to those who are factually performing the Vedic rituals and those who expect to be qualified. Or, in other words, they are expecting to take birth in a Brahmin family. <laughs> and then do the ritual and study them. That is when Pastor Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada he said this. They were chanting or uh, I think for some inauguration or something and some smart Brahmins came and you remember the details? Mm -hmm. Then they came and told like, you know, um, yeah, you keep chanting like that, next time we'll be born into Brahmana families. Then they told reported that to Prabhupada. No. Prabhupada said, you go and tell them that you, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. you, you will be born into Brahmana No, you keep, you, you keep doing our yeah, rituals and then you like take birth in uh, Iskon. <laughs> <laughs> foreign countries and chant the Holy Name. That's true. That's, yeah, exactly. All this nonsense understanding. Let's see how nicely Prabhupada... <coughs> Okay, text eight. Tanto maham brahma param kumam sam. Pratyak sotasyat mani sam vibhavyam. Sateja sadvasta guna pravaham. Sateja sadvasta Vande Vishnu Kapilam Veda Garbam. Vande Vishnu Kapilam Veda Garbam. I believe, my Lord, that you are Lord Vishnu Himself under the name of Kapila. And you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Supreme Brahman. The saints and sages have been freed from all the disturbances of the senses and mind meditate upon you. For by your mercy only, can one become free from the clutches of the three modes of material nature? At the time of dissolution, all the Vedas are sustained in you only. Prabhupada says, <laughs> very nicely, Deva would be the mother Kapila, instead of prolonging her prayers, summarized that Lord Kapila is none other than Vishnu. <laughs> and that since she was a woman, it was not possible for her to worship him properly, simply by prayer. And so much uh, humility there. <coughs> it was her intention that the Lord be satisfied. The word pratyak is significant. In yogic practice, the eight divisions are yama, niyama, asana, pranayama, 
Pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, and samadhi. Pratyahara means to wind up the activities of the senses. So you can see how smart this lady, Devahuti, is. The level of realization of the Supreme Lord evidenced by Devahuti is possible when one is able to withdraw the senses from material activities. When one is engaged in devotion service, there's no scope for his senses to be engaged otherwise. In such full Krishna consciousness, one can understand the Supreme Lord as He is. So here again, Prabhupada has mentioned this many, many times in this canto. Uh, he says, one is engaged in devotional service, there's no scope for his senses to be engaged at all. So what is his point? You should always be engaged. To, to what? Understand the Supreme Lord as He is. It's not going to be like, because you do one time here, a little bit there, it's not. It has to be continuous, continuous 24 hours. <coughs> so now we go back to Gotham City. No, I mean back to Maitreya. <laughs> Text 9. Right? Maitra Vacha Nidito Bhagavani Bam Bilakya Parapuma Vacha Viklavayityaha Matara Matri Vatsalaha Thus the Supreme Personality of God and Kapila satisfied by the words of his mother towards whom he was very affectionate replied with gravity. Hmm. So you can see eh, that even the Lord is very affectionate to his devotees and here because she is his mother he is also still very affectionate. So the son or the daughter must be very affectionate to their parents. <laughs> and not, what are you asking me this question for? So Kapila Muni, I said like that. <laughs> right? Then everyone will say, why, why, you nothing else to do? Yeah, just go away, old lady, <laughs> old man. <laughs> right? Nowadays, that's how they it's talk, like, right? You don't know anything, Mama. Yeah, exactly. You don't know anything. <laughs> he, he never said like that. He is so happy that she is asking like that. And he was serious about how to help you know, her to go back to God here. But at the same time, he is very affectionate. Hmm? <coughs> he is all perfect, Prabhupada says. And his exhibition of affection for his mother was also complete. The children should be affectionate. If there is no affection, then there are some problems, you know. Extend Kapila Uvacha Kapila Uvacha Algena Nina Mataste Algena Nina Mataste Save ye no detena my Husty Tena Param Kashta Chirad our roots, you see. Personality of Godhead said, My dear mother, the path of self realization which I have already instructed to you is very easy. You can execute this system without difficulty, and by following it, you shall very soon be liberated, even within your present body. <laughs> so we are already complaining, and therefore, why she has to do Sankhya <laughs> yoga. <laughs> <laughs> and she's a, a, a lady somehow. Huh? I was listening to one Shila Prabhupada lecture today. Yes. And he says, Krishna has given the process to reach him. It is called yoga. It is very easy. Hmm. Prabhupada says like that. Hmm. Yeah, it is actually. Uh, the difficulty comes from our side. It doesn't come from Krishna. <laughs> we are reluctant. Huh? We are hesitant, uh, we are in denial, <laughs> we are doubtful. <laughs> doubtful, all these things. Yeah. These are all withdrawal symptoms from madness. Yes, from Maya, <laughs> from trying to enjoy. We want to enjoy, so that's why it's very difficult to give up. The, the little independence that Krishna gave, gave us to either go to Him 
or to enjoy the material nature, we don't want to give that up. We're thinking we are independent, enjoying the material nature. But then, you know, you go to material nature, you can just slap it on and kick, and then we say, ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> we want to stay here. <laughs> yeah, get kicked more. Okay. So Prabhupada gives a, a statement that is very applicable to us uh, and he he's also actually confirming what uh, Kapila Muni is saying. Devotional service is so perfect that simply by following the rules and regulations and executing them under the direction of the spiritual master one is liberated as it is said herein from the clutches of Maya even in this body. So exactly what he said Prabhupada wrote it down but make, made it easier for us to understand because we all have a spiritual master. Devahuti's spiritual master is her own son. Her, her spiritual master was her, her husband and now it is Kapila Dev. And the whole point is to do it. Just do it. <laughs> Alright? <clears throat> and he, he says that you can execute this system without difficulty. Okay. And very soon you will be liberated. So for us also it should be very soon. <laughs> but we, we keep the difficulties. We make our life difficult. So Prabhupada then compares with other processes which are not devotional uh, process. Uh, he says like uh, philosophical speculation, jnana. One is never certain whether or not he is at the perfectional stage. You don't know. But devotional service is easy because you just follow your spiritual master. And even in this present body, you get liberated as Yayasya Hare. Karmana Manasari. So it's already stated that within this body, if you do everything for your spiritual master, not for yourself, you're sincerely doing it. You're not thinking, oh, if I just do like it. No, sincerely, yes, my spiritual master is as good as Krishna. I'll serve him and I'll serve Krishna, whatever there is need to do. You're liberated. Nothing can touch you. So then there is an interesting point, and this is for everyone. Sometimes doubts arise in the minds of neophytes about whether or not the spiritual master is liberated. So they will test the spiritual master. Right? They'll say the spiritual master will say, you know, wake me up at a certain time, I'm taking rest. So then they will be all waiting and then they say, no need to wake up because the spiritual master is spiritual. He'll know. <laughs> right? And the spiritual master will come out. Why y'all didn't wake me up? I missed my phone call or something like that. So these are the doubts people have. They don't understand what it means sometimes. Actually, this happened in Seattle. Ah, there you go. <laughs> and then they are doubtful. Huh? about the bodily affairs of the spiritual master. So they think, well, my spiritual master is limping all the time, so maybe he's not pure. Right? This is the, the mentality of uh, some of the religious uh, systems out there, where they think that uh, immediately you get uh, a new, fresh body. You know? These are, it's not like that. You don't judge a person by the bodily symptoms. You judge them by their Activities. Spiritual systems, yes. Spiritual ad attitudes and so on. <laughs> so you can judge yourself based on this also, where are you at? You know? So yeah, never judge uh, the spiritual master. Not at all, you shouldn't. Even if it sounds very uh, material, sometimes you may even say something so material, you shouldn't. It's not your job, put it that way. <laughs> Unless, of course, it's breaking principles, uh, this, if the spiritual man say, go and kill this person, and then, yeah, there's something wrong. <laughs> yeah. But otherwise, don't judge them. Yeah. I think one of, somewhere I read, uh, 
Anand Maharaj's books. If a spiritual master, even if he goes in a liquor shop, you should understand that he has some purpose there. Yeah. So, it's it's referring to Lord so, Nityananda. Uh, when Lord Nityananda uh, goes to a, a liquor 